Hi everybody, Tina Marie Cowett from Javi Model Railroad. Welcome back to my channel. A little different background here. I'm here actually at my workbench just outside the train room. And the reason why I'm here is a, a couple weeks ago you might have seen the Scale Trains Rivet Counter GES 44 Jivo review I did. And if you missed it, you can go back and watch it right up here. But what I wanted to do is, as this engine is actually for my layout, I, I don't get the opportunity to weather a lot of stuff for my own layout because I'm usually doing a lot of work for clients and the YouTube video and working and everything else. But I wanted to do something different for my channel. So I want to share with you kind of how I do certain weathering techniques. Now, it always varies depending on the, the client, it depends on the rolling stock, it depends on the engine, it depends really on what you're trying to weather. And this particular engine, I wanted something unique for my layout. What I wanted is a real, real workhorse from CSX. Now, those of you that are going to watch this are going to say, well, that's not what the real engine looks like. And you're absolutely 100% correct. That's not what the real engine looks like. What I did is took a, about 10 different pictures of different CSX engines and picked out the stuff that I like from all the different pictures and combined them together to make a very unique engine for my layout. And again, I can't stress this enough. My layout, just like it's your layout, do what you enjoy run what you, en what you enjoy, and I just happen to really like this particular engine. So I'm gonna show you in this video how I go from this to this. So sit back, enjoy, grab a cup of coffee or a glass of wine if you have it, and come with me as I share with you a little background on how I weathered up this beauty for my layout. And that's coming at you right now. When weathering any engine, I start off by masking all the cab windows using green frog tape. You can use standard blue painter's tape, but I personally think green frog tape gives a better seal. I cut a bunch of different size strips on my workbench. Some of them you might have to trim a bit to make sure you get good coverage. Don't forget to make sure to get all the little side mirrors as well. Make sure to be careful when applying the tape with the X-Acto blade. I try to be very light handed just making sure the tape is in the area I want it to before going back over with a wooden skewer. Try to make sure the ends are firmly attached without pushing too hard and damaging or worse, scratching the glass. That's never a good thing. You have to do this on both sides and can be very time consuming but because you'll be spraying this unit with dull coat as well as airbrushing it, you don't want to ruin the glass. Now this goes as well for the front of the engine. I also mask off the ditch lights, front lights, and glass on the door. So 
Switching to the back, I also mask off the back leg. Now a couple items I need to point out that I also mask on this engine is there's three additional lights on this unit. One on the front. This one here on the side of the car. As well as the one in the rear. Masked off the number boards on this unit. I don't do this for all my engines, but for this one, I wanted them to be a bit cleaner. Once taped off, I give the entire engine a light dusting of dull coat. Now, as dull coat is hard to find, I like to use Krylon matte finish. It says matte finish, but it pretty much works just like the dull coat. Now, the point of this is to protect the original paint, but to also tone down the glossiness of the new model. A lot of models when you first get them. Um, this will actually give you a good weathering effect without even having to do any weathering. It also allows the paint as well as the powder something to grab onto and to stick. And if there are any slight little imperfections with fingerprints, it'll remove those as well. Now I like to give this a good hour or so to dry before moving on to the next step. Although not prototypical to this particular unit, I wanted to fade the paint down to get a, give it an aged sun look. I personally love Vallejo airbrushing paint. I used white 70.951 for this as well as a few drops of light sea gray 70.973 as well as just a few drops of the Vallejo paint thinner. Here's a little pro tip for you all. I use in all my airbrush paints like this, um, natural African gemstones, basically like three millimeters. I add a few into each bottle. This helps to mix the paint while you shake it. Now, I know some of you like to use BBs, but I have found that they have a tendency to rust over time, thus ruining your paint. I then put this on my paint mixer and mix for about a minute or two, depending on how the th how thick the paint is. I just love this paint shaker. It does an awesome job and it's very inexpensive. And it's a lot better than trying to sit there and shake the paints by hand for a couple minutes. Links for everything will be in the descriptions. Now, a lot of people don't like to show their mistakes, but this was a big mistake on my part. I've never really filmed my weathering techniques over the years, so after testing the paint, I noticed the camera wasn't centered right, and can you guess what happened? Yes, tip dry. Now, those not familiar with airbrushing, this is when the paint hardens on the fine tip. So when I went to go airbrush, instead of a nice smooth, light flow of paint, well, it kind of spotted. Now had this been a client's uh, project, I probably would have taken the time, removed the paint and started again. However, I wanted to see if I could make this work for me. So I took the tip of the needle, cleaned it up a little bit, and proceeded to cover the bottom of the unit, including making sure to hit the CSX graphics to fade them a bit. Now, unfortunately, while filming the weathering of the trucks, the camera stopped recording. And again, as I was more focused on the work and not filming, missed it. However, just to let you know, I did use a mix of 40% mud paint from Vallejo, 71.037, 40% flat earth, 70.983, and 20% sand gray, 71.141. And again, I mixed it with just a little of the Vallejo paint thinner, and I did multiple light coats to making sure to hit it from different angles. Also, you wanna make sure to turn the trucks inside on both sides especially around the fuel tanks so you can get the inside of the fuel tanks. Now I let this dry for about an hour before coming back and hitting it with another light coat of the Krylon matte finish. 
And then I gave this a good 24 hours to dry before moving on to the next step. Now this is one of my favorite parts of weathering models like this. Now this is going to look like a really bad child's art project, but trust me, this has a really cool effect when it's done. Now I get a nice big soft brush and load my brush with a mix of the AIM weathering powder, Grime Black 3102 and the Medium Gray 3110, kind of almost like a 50-50 mixture. Make sure to really get into all the model's little fine details. This really brings out the, the, the details that the manufacturer had originally put in there that you don't normally see because it's just a flat color. I also go back over all the grills, especially the radiator grills on the back of the unit with nothing but the grimy black. I really want to get that, that black really pushed in there and dark. Now on some of these units, there tend to be more of a dark earth color than the black, but I wanted mine to really look black. Now it is actually easier if you remove the railings and then reinstall them afterwards, but you can work around them. Just be careful as they can pop off or worse, you can damage them. Now this is where the real magic happens. Now you're gonna take very small pieces of paper towel and kind of dip them lightly in water. You want them damp, but not so damp they remove all the weathering from the cracks and grooves. So you're going to slowly wipe off the powder. Now I find it's easier and works better if you flip the paper towel often and also replace it so you don't take off as a lot of the weathering powder all at once. Again, take your time in this process, especially if you didn't remove the railings.
Now let's take a look at the other side and kind of do this in double time. You can see here one rail popped off and a little bit another rail popped off as well. And fortunately they didn't break. So again, take your time or remove the rails. Now you're going to repeat the same process with the same colors on this side as we did on the other side. Now look how nice those panels stand out with the highlights and the black and the gray mix. Now on top of the model, I pretty much do the same procedure, making sure to get the, the back grills black really, really good. However, I also come back over the top a little bit with the AIM's Medium Earth Powder 3101. Now I like to take that same medium earth powder and I'll go back over the trucks as well as the gas tanks and kind of the lower part of the engine with the same medium earth powder. I'll, I'm trying to be very random and I don't want to cover the entire area. I just want to give certain areas highlights and a variation of color. Now it's back to the airbrush booth. This time I like to drop the air pressure really low down to about eight PSI, so just enough to lightly hit the model and remove particles of weathering in areas I didn't want. Now the AIM weathering really sticks to the dull coat, so you don't have to be too worried at a low pressure of blowing it all off, but do keep that in mind. Now we're gonna give this one more light dusting of dull coat and there are two reasons why I do this. One is to make sure to lock in the weathering powder so it doesn't come off while handling it. But the other is I wanted to try this very unique weathering technique on the safety stripings that I kind of picked up. And in order to do this, I needed the powder sealed. So I waited another 24 hours of drying before I would come back on the bench and work on this. Now I've done this on a few other models and happened on it by accident years ago and loved it. I tried in the past of Vallejo's chipping paint and you know there's a time and a place for that. I had great success with that but sometimes there's always a different way to get the same effect. Now as you saw earlier I really came in with that medium earth and covered that yellow safety striping. Now I'm going to go back over them with a micro brush dipped very lightly in microsol. Yes that's what I said microsol. Now you want to be careful not to remove the paint underneath, so scrape the paint off with just very little pressure. I make sure to dab the micro brush on a paper towel after dipping it in the microsol. I, I want it wet, but not dripping as it can eat away at the other weathering, so just be aware of that. Now you can see how this gives almost a rusted look to the model on the weather stripping. Now I also use the same technique to go back and remove some of the weathering from the other areas I wanted to highlight, like these front hoses. They're, they're red and I really wanted those to stand out. I also went back and wiped the top of the gas caps and a few other little details so the, the red showed through.
Now to really make the truck stand out, I like to get a small brush and grab a little Vallejo Oily Steel 70.865 and I mix it with a few drops of water. Make sure to mix it with water and not thinner as the thinner will remove the weathering powder like I did here because I grabbed the wrong brush. Don't worry, that can easily be fixed. The idea is you want it to be thin enough to get in the cracks, but not so thin it doesn't stick. I again go over the trucks randomly. You don't want to cover it completely, just enough to give the oily feel. Make sure to focus on like the springs as well as some of the smaller cables. I also like to go over and hit the tanks a bit to give a little color variation, but also where you might see leaks. Also make sure to go in a downward motion when you're dealing with the tanks as this is the direction rain will fall. Now you can see the red caps I cleaned. You would normally have spills in this area for this model, so I wanted to highlight it, but not too much. So I went back with a fine brush and kind of dried brush a little bit more of the AIM's grimy black. Now you wanna make sure to extend this down under the tanks and I slowly bring the color up in layers to how I want it. And then I go back with a dry paper towel and lightly remove what I don't want to kind of smooth it out. Now on some models, I will actually go back with a more diluted flat black paint and with a much finer brush and kind of fill in a more pronounced stream, but I didn't do that on this model. Now in some models, I'll actually start with the trucks, but in this model, I didn't do that. So I had to set the engine up on a test track to paint the wheels. Now I use different shades of brown in my rolling stock, as you tend to see more of those wheels. But here for my engines, I like to use the Vallejo Chocolate Brown 70.872. And I get a good amount of paint on the small brush and I slowly paint the wheels. Now I try to keep the speed slow so you don't want the paint kind of spurting off into other areas of your model, especially in the detailed work. 
Make sure the wheels are going away from the brush and not into it. If the brush is going into it, you're not gonna have a smooth finish. And I will also go back after everything dries to make sure I didn't get any paint on the parts that connect to the rail. Now these look a little bit glossy and kind of shiny because it's fresh paint, but trust me when it dries, it looks awesome. And check out those rolling bearing caps from Scale Trains. Damn, they look good close up. And there you go. One more light hit of the Krylon matte finish in 24 hours drying time and it's ready for the layout. So check out these pictures and video right off my layout. Hi everybody, hope you enjoyed that video. Maybe you picked up a trick or two. Um, I've learned a lot of tricks over the years from the YouTube channels of some of these great modelers that are out there as well. So if you pick up a little trick from what I put out, even better. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the weathering job on the CSX. Again, it is my layout, so I kind of weathered it for what I wanted and my needs. And everybody is different, and that's fine. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet subscribed and hit that little bell notification so you don't miss a new video that comes out. And I try to get videos out when I can. I have a lot of projects that I'm working on, including some more weathering products that I'm going to share with you as well. Anyways, want to thank you all for tuning into this video. Remember, inspired realism, well, it starts right here. I'm Tina Marie Cowett. This is Mojave Model Railroad. And keep up the good work, guys. Love you all. Happy model railroading. Bye, everybody.